Welcome to the Inspire Photoshop Actions video tutorial for CS and CC versions of Photoshop. MCP Inspire will help you find your style and put a timeless twist on the latest trends. Before you start using these actions, once they're loaded into Photoshop, you'll want to go ahead and extend the space in your Actions palette. The way to do this is just hover on the left side and just drag it outward. And that way you'll be able to read all of the names, descriptions, and any extra directions that we've put in the Layers panel or the Actions panel. This action set is designed to work in sections, which will help you work more efficiently. Advanced users may relocate or rearrange sections for their own personalized workflow. We'll start with the Lighting Fix section. These actions will help you brighten or darken your image, either everywhere or in select spots. I recommend adjusting exposure first if your images are under or overexposed. The light blocking and light painting are great to use anytime. Next, we have three base actions to choose from. We have the color base, the black and white base, and the brilliant combo base. You'll want to pick only one of these for each image. These actions can be used alone or in combination with any looks or toning overlays in the set. If you partially edit in Lightroom or you use a flash, you may find these actions to be a little bit strong. If that's the case, you could skip them or just adjust the opacity to suit your image. Now comes the fun stuff. The Inspire Color and Black and White Quick Looks. The Quick Looks are divided into these two sections. One section is meant optimized for color and one is optimized for black and white. Run any of these alone or after using the base action. You can also stack these, adjust the opacity, or open the folder once the action builds and tweak individual layers for a truly custom look. If you really like to play, you could also use the carousel or merry-go-round actions. These will run all the looks in a section. So you can see right here the merry-go-round and the carousel. It'll run all the color looks or in the black and white section, same thing. And if you want to run the base too, use the carousel. If you just want the looks, run the merry-go-round. Our next section might bring you back to your childhood. It's called mood rings. You know those rings that change color on your finger and tell you how you feel? Only our mood rings are for adults and they're much more fun. Try these, mix and match, and have a blast. What they will do is add a light haze, a toning, or just an overlay look on your image. The custom effects section isn't quite as fast as using the quick looks, but if your photo screams for something super unique, you'll definitely want to check these out. Once you run an action from the custom effect section, it will actually open up a folder and give you a message as to what you should be tweaking. There's certain layers you can turn on and off, as well as certain layers that will require masking. The next section is the color tricks. The color tricks have everything from adjusting white balance to popping color. There's a little bit of everything in here and you can even change the color of solid objects with just a little bit of feedback and some painting. If you're completing your image and want some special effects, Inspire will help you infuse light into your images. We have a number of options for adding lighting, blurring out backgrounds, or even adding soft clouds or rainbows. Finally, we want your image to pop. Even if you edit with a vintage, haze, or matte finish, your images shouldn't be drab. Our polishing actions will help you sharpen, add contrast, or reduce haze. I must say gem polish might be my favorite action in the entire set. It polishes and sharpens your images in exactly the right places and makes jewelry sparkle, eyes twinkle, and beading on bridal gowns come alive. We get so many questions about speeding up workflow. This section definitely can help you if you're in the mood to speed up your workflow and we will be doing a separate video about it. You can assign these keyboard shortcuts and quickly accomplish tasks to speed up your workflow, such as converting to 8-bit or sRGB. Also, we have actions in here to make snapshots for masking and flattening and so much more. If you're ready to start using the actions, go for it, have some fun. If you have a few more minutes of time to give us today, why don't you watch how we edit a particular image three different ways. This image here is from Kelly Roper Photography. And you'll notice it's actually an amazing image straight out of camera. The only thing I notice here, her skin tones are a little cool and I might want the colors to come alive a little bit more. 
So we're going to go ahead and edit this photo. My favorite way to use the actions is actually to use mix and matches. If you have a slow computer or not enough RAM, it may not be yours. For this photo today, let's go ahead and use my favorite, which is the carousel action, because it will run all of the quick color looks. We're going to go ahead and click play, and you'll notice when you click play, it runs a message just telling you it might take a minute to finish while it runs through all of the actions from that section. While it's doing that, I'll just explain real quick. When it's done, the brilliant base will be on. The rest of these sections will be off. So the rest of the actions will be off by default. What we're going to do is you can turn them on and play and see what ones you like best and tweak opacity or even open up folders to adjust further. So you'll see that just took about 10 seconds on my computer to run. If yours is slower, it could take up to 30 seconds or a minute. Okay, now we're on the brilliant base and you will see that it's set by a default to 50%. I'm gonna go ahead and increase it a little bit here. Make it pop even just a little bit more. I'm gonna bring it up in the 70s. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on vitality. And let's go ahead and move the opacity down just a bit. Then the next thing I'm going to do is turn on Sweet Dreams. So I'm going to go ahead and move that down to 14%. Next, I'm going to turn on Spunky. And I'm going to move that opacity down as well. We'll do something around 35%. And Lemon Sorbet. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I notice her face has got a little bit of extra yellow here. So I'm just going to go scroll down to the color tricks area. And I'm gonna use the um, MCP Color Fix Paint On. And it's again gonna pop up a message giving you some instructions. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Add Red. And with a low opacity brush, I'm gonna come in here and just paint a little bit on her face with a white brush and on her hair just to warm up her skin tones a little bit. The next thing I want to do or show you is the shallow depth of field. Certainly it's already got a pretty shallow depth of field, but if we click play, we can actually increase that depth of field a little bit more. So it's a little bit more shallow. And I ran that and all I'm going to do is just paint on. I'm going to increase my brush to 100%. I'm going to paint on the background. Now when you're doing this, you probably will want to zoom in and get real close so that areas you don't want blurred aren't blurred. But for the purposes of a video tutorial, I'm going to go kind of fast. Next, I want to sharpen. This is looking great to me. I just want to go ahead and sharpen it. So I'm going to scroll down to the sharpening actions. And I'm going to go ahead and use Precision Sharp. And again, all these actions are stackable. Unless you prefer flatten in between things, while you're using this particular set, you should not have to flatten at all. I'm going to come in here and just paint Precision Sharp right on her eye and you'll see how it immediately brought it to life. A lot of times I also like to paint the sharpening on eyebrows and sometimes on lips. It'll bring out the highlights in the lips. So here's the sharpening before and after. So now to see our before and after, I can click on the before and the after and you can see how that just made an already great photo come to life. Let's say we want to tweak it a little bit further and do a different look. The one thing we'll need to delete, even if we're going to play with it further, and you'll notice this in the message for Precision Sharp, says you need to run it last. The reason is it's making a merged copy of all the layers underneath. So if we start tweaking them again, your eyes will actually look different than the rest. It won't blend well. So let's go ahead and just delete that layer. We can always resharpen later if we want to. All the other layers will be fine, um, keeping them the way they are. And let's go ahead and just make a few changes. Let's go ahead and bring the Brilliant Base down. I'm going to work on a hazy look now for you. So we'll bring the Brilliant Base back down to about 50%, which is the default. And we'll go ahead and move Vitality up a little bit. Next, we're going to keep Sweet Dreams and um, Spunky the same. We're going to work with Silk Blend though. We're going to turn Silk Blend on. And then Prom Queen I'm going to turn on as well. 
You can see how it's starting to build a hazy look on top of this. We're going to leave lemon sorbet on. And now I'm going to show you one other action. We are going to use the sunburst. So when you play sunburst, it's again, it's giving you a message. And now you can see a message pops up and tells us to resize. You need to resize when this comes up. Okay, you need to make at least a little change. You can't keep it right in the center or the action won't finish running. So for this photo, I'm gonna go ahead and move it. You'll notice the photo shrunk. It didn't really shrink. It just shrunk so you could see the whole thing. On my monitor that's big, I really don't need that. But on small ones, it's very useful that it shrinks. So I moved it over where I want it coming in from the um, right corner, which is where the natural sun flare would occur in this photo. And I click the check mark to accept. Then it says to adjust color, you can turn on the little color swatch, which is open and ready for you. And you can actually click on the color swatch and change that to anything. You can change it to more reddish, or you can keep going with more of an orange, or you can have it just be more of a clear flare um, sunburst, which is by default. Now that we are done with this, I really like this look. It's that pretty haze matte look that's really popular right now. But to me, it's a little bit strong. And also, I think I would still like a little bit of sharpening on there. So again, I do have to rerun Precision Sharp. Press continue. I sharpen her eyes, eyebrows a little bit, and lips. Thing is here, her eyes stand out because everything else is so hazy. So I am going to reduce the opacity quite a bit on this. So it's a lot less sharpening than on the color popped one. If you like the haze and the matte look, but it just feels a little bit strong, one thing you can use is at the very bottom, you'll see there's a group everything action. If I click play, you'll notice it does just that. It groups everything and you can adjust the opacity of all of your layers at once. But let's go ahead and run a snapshot so we can compare the two. So there's our snapshot too, you see it built for us. So there's the before, there's the first after, and there's the second after. Now, if you like black and whites, let's do one more edit. Here's the before. We're gonna start from scratch with this one. So we are gonna go ahead and just run the brilliant black and white base. And next, we're gonna run a couple black and white actions. And of course, that looks great, just how it is. Like if I sharpened her eyes, we'd be good to go. But if you want a more matte look or something else, let's go ahead and tweak it just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and run Chic, which is a subtle matte. Of course, you can make it more dramatic if you like. And I love what that did to the background, but because I'm a contrast kind of girl, I'm gonna go ahead and mask it off of her face. So I'm gonna take a black brush and just paint it off of her. You can go ahead and increase the opacity to even mattify the background a little bit more. And then we could come in here and you could do shallow depth of field if you want, but I've showed you that already. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly run the precision sharp. So I come in here and I paint on precision sharp really quick. And again, if that's a little too much because you did a matte look, just bring the opacity down. And there we have it. Let's make our snapshot and compare all three. So there's our before, there's our first edit, our second edit, and our third edit. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned a lot from this quick overview of Inspire. Make sure to read the PDF tutorial we included for more detailed instructions. We will have future videos on this action set, so look for those as well. Thank you, this is Jody. Our website is www.mcpactions.com.